Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Monkey Wrench. I'm Kelly, the monkey with the wrench. Please take a moment to hit the subscribe button. Enough said about that. Today, we are gonna be working on a machine you've seen on this channel before. This is a Gravely Z34 commercial mower. Uh, these mowers are great if you're in the industry because they're only 34 inches wide and they will fit through any 36 inch gate. This is a commercial machine and I think it's about eight years old. I haven't checked the year on it, but you've seen this. It was broke down uh, in a field. It belonged to a customer. I've known this machine for about three years and it, it always has little piddly stuff wrong with it. And basically the owner <clears throat> came out to start it up was driving it around and all of a sudden oil started squirting out of the side of the machine so she also claimed that it was making noise a weird noise and it was running a little bit rough and it didn't quite have the power that it normally did when the blades were turned on so all of these things point to very specific problems so the first thing was the oil filter the oil filter apparently worked its way loose just a little bit and there's a rubber o-ring around the top of the oil filter and what happened was the pressure built up in there and pushed the o-ring off of the filter and because of that it was able to squirt oil at high pressure out the side of the machine and if you've ever seen that uh, it looks pretty scary like a horror movie because the the oil is squirting clear over this entire distance and hitting over here and it's a pretty scary thing but uh, she decided a long time ago a few months ago before I fixed a few things that were wrong with it last time that she wanted to get rid of it and get something larger something in the 50 to 60 inch range uh, because she cuts 10 acres with it <coughs> so when this happened she was at the end of her rope she asked me if I was interested in purchasing it. We came to a deal and I purchased it very inexpensively. Um, it has a commercial deck on it, which is nice. This is a solid steel quarter inch plate welded deck. It's not stamped out of, you know, cheap metal in a press. This is an actual built deck. Gravely does make a good machine. Now this machine's $8,000 new. So, you know, you're going to get what you pay for out of it. It's got a twin Kawasaki 26 horse on it. Uh, <clears throat> and she didn't know what was going on with it. She was just looking for an excuse to buy a new machine. So I picked this up. So the first thing I did was pull the oil filter off. And the O-ring was off of it. It fell down. So in order to double check that that was the problem, I put the O-ring back in place, screwed the filter back on, filled it up with some old oil, and sure enough, it wasn't leaking anymore. So I've got to get up a new filter today. I'm going to drain the oil off camera, change the oil, put a new filter on. Now the second thing, it was making a weird noise. Found out what that noise was. This fan blade is on top of the drive pump, and as you can see, a blade is missing this one's broken and when this turns I don't know how well you'll be able to see it but there's blades here 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 and here and here and these four blades have broken off they were hitting something I have no idea what the ends are a little bit chewed up that one as you saw was flopping around I think that might maybe the battery moved or something in there you never know what a customer's doing but something hit that fan blade in fact there's one of them there something hit four of those fan blades broke three completely off one was just held on a little bit I just pulled it off um, and it was flopping and flicking and there was a high-pitched flicking sound coming out of it so that mixed with the oil squirting out the side is a pretty scary thing and the dogs are coming out, so I'm going to have to finish this video later. But 
Then I went ahead and took my spark plug checker because it didn't sound like it was running really perfectly and it didn't have power when you turned on the blades. That told me that on a twin cylinder motor, one side was working and one side wasn't. So I took my spark checker and I put it on each side to find out that there was no spark on the right side. In order to double check that, I took the old magneto and I checked it with a multimeter and it was no good. And the magnetos on this machine are identical on both sides. So I left it on the left side. I took the right I took the magneto off completely on the right side. And I started the machine. And it ran just as I expected it to. Then I took the magneto from that side and I put it on this side and I started the machine. So it would be running on the opposite cylinder and it ran just exactly the same. So I know that all the internals on the motor were good and I know the magneto was no good. So I went ahead and ordered a new one which came today. I got overnight shipping on it for free. So this is my engine number, FH451V as in Victor 8. That's the Kawasaki motor that's on mine. And the part number for the Magneto is 21171-7034. Now, I did not go with the Kawasaki Magneto. I went with Kawasaki Compatible. Um, this one came from Parts Run. And to give you an idea of why, the local parts house wanted $78 for the Magneto, for one Magneto. And uh, I could get a pair of them online on Amazon for 38 bucks for two of them, and they're identical. And I just bought a single one. Not that I'm not going to replace the other one, which I will, because when you replace one, you should replace them both. But I want to make sure this was the, the situation. And I was able to get one compatible Magneto for $21. So instead of spending 80 bucks at the local store on one, I got one for 20 bucks. It's going to work just fine. So I'm going to take this cover off. This part I left unbolted. Magneto there. Let's see if I can set up the camera here a little bit. I don't think I bolted everything back down. We're going to take this cover off and you can see here there's one magneto and the other one goes right here. So I'm going to go ahead and take that magneto. I'm going to bolt it in place. It's these two bolts here. I'm going to set it with my business card and I'll show you that. Now magnetos don't have to be a scary thing. All they do is sit in place. There's a magnet on your flywheel. As it passes, it sends a current through the magneto to your spark plug. This is the entire electrical system. <clears throat> this spade connector here is what you connect up to your kill line so that when you turn off your motor, it grounds it out, takes away your spark, shuts down your motor. You can use feelers gauges on this. If you choose to use feelers gauges, so be it. Look up your particular motor to find out the exact air gap. There should be a gap between your magneto and the flywheel. But a standard old school for the last 50 years has been very simply use a standard business card and it gives you about the right gap. So I'm gonna turn the flywheel so that the magnets are here where I want them to be. There's my magnets right there. I've heard people say that spark might be missing if the magnets are rusty or any of that crap and i found that to be absolutely false after 25 years rust on there does not make a difference but if it makes you feel better sand them down if you want to now i can see that something was touching this i can see a line going right across the center of this and it looked to me like the old magneto had actually worked its way forward and was touching it which is probably what caused it to go bad um, you know, this is maintenance. 
Everything needs to be tightened up from time to time. You have 3,600 RPMs at all times shaking things and things come loose. So I'm going to take the new magneto. Uh, in this case, the spade connector for the kill switch goes in the up position. I'm gonna take my business card. I'm gonna put it there to keep a gap between the magneto and the magnets. Basically, it just needs a slight gap so I can pick up the charge but not rub against anything and cause an issue. Now the reason these posts are so high is because when I put that cover back on there's a cage that bolts on and it bolts on to those four places so that's why that post is high and it's real simple. With the business card in place you put the magneto right up against it and if you think a little bit of rust is going to stop magnetism when you put the solid business card in there and push this magneto up against it it pulls itself right against that magnet and holds it so now we have the right gap i forgot my ratchet <clears throat> so because you don't want this to move tighten it down tighten it down pretty good don't strip it out but tighten it down Pretty good. Because you don't want it moving. And now, most of the time, you can't pull the business card out, but I was able to. If it's too tight and you can't pull it out, just turn the flywheel as you pull and it'll come out one side. Now I'm going to put my kill wire back on. It just plugs right on the top. And again, that's so when you turn the key off, it grounds this out and takes the spark away here instead of letting it go through your boot to your spark plug. Now this just plugs on, on your spark plug. That's it, we've installed a new magneto. I'm going to make sure that these are tight. They are. I'm gonna put my case back on because I know I don't have to do anything else under here. So, case goes back on. And you see how the posts come out there and there, that's because when this stuff gets bolted back in place, then there's a cage that goes on. So I'm gonna put all my bolts back in my case up here. Um, one of them holds the fuel pump. I'm gonna put all this stuff back together and we're gonna start this thing up and make sure we're firing on both cylinders. All right, I got it buttoned up. And what I noticed, for whatever reason, this piece right here, goes underneath of this cage and over top of the fan and it attaches with three bolts this is bent this is the noise that she was hearing for whatever reason somehow this got bent and it was dragging on the plastic so for now I just took this off I may take a ball peen hammer and try to round it over again try and straighten it up uh, I just wanted to make sure that I was going to hear that there was no noise at all and it doesn't do anything except stop leaves from being sucked down into the fan. It's got this uh, this larger grate up there to stop big debris like acorns and sticks and stuff. But all that does is stop smaller debris from being sucked down into the fan. So it's kind of important but not for today. So now it's all buttoned back up. Let's see what it sounds like. In fact, let's see what it drives like too. I'll put it up like that. And let's see. Everything's hooked back up the way it's supposed to be. Choke is separate, I love that. It's not on your throttle, it's separate. starts up and it sounds great now I forgot when I brought this home yesterday off the trailer in order to freewheel it it doesn't have a release like the little box store motors do a little lever in the back that you could pull to release the pumps on a commercial machine 
you actually have to release the pumps yourself. Now this is a pump here, this is a pump here. And if you can see right here where my finger is, there is, that's a 5 8 um, bolt head basically. And there's one on this as this one as well. There's a 5 8 bolt head right there now you can stick a little pin through there if you have one but i just take a 5x 5 8 inch box wrench and loosen it lefty loosey righty tighty if you loosen it up uh it releases the pressure on the pump and allows you to freewheel and then you tighten it back up and it puts the pressure back in so let me do that real quick i'm gonna try and do this with one hand so it's shaky but uh let's see Counterclockwise would be that way, so clockwise would be that way. So I just take that, and I loosened it quite a few turns. Uh, just don't pull it all the way out. And there's no bleeding needed afterwards. It literally just allows a little bit of the fluid to roll freely. Take it, it doesn't have to be tight, tight. Just tight enough. I'm sweating, so I'm trying to not drip on the camera and like I said on a commercial mower there's actually a hole in the head that you can feed a little pin through sometimes a small screwdriver I just use the 5 8 whenever I can because it's a little bit stronger and that's it and now our pumps are re-engaged. So let me jump on this thing. It sounds good now. Let me drive it around a little bit. Make sure we're back up on the power. Choke on, throttle down, brake on. Uh, the box stores often do not have a separate brake. Uh, on a commercial machine, you have to have the brake on for it to even start. So what am I doing here? Something's... Oh. And on this one, because the arms don't go out and in, they stay in one place, you have to make sure that the arms are centered. turns the arms go out and in okay let me see if I can back you up to show you what I mean and again I can't see the camera so I'm doing the best I can but in order to put it in the locked position the arms have to be spread out okay and then when you drive it you pull them back in towards yourself and then you can drive when they're pushed out then you know they're dead center and the lock comes on that's how the lock engages but on this machine, the arms do not go in and out. The arms themselves are solid. The handle goes up and down. But because of that, there's no particular locked mechanism for the arm to slide in. So if you have trouble trying to start it, the springs on the back might be bad. The springs on the back these springs here right here are what make your arms go back to the center position this spring right here 
So when you pull that lever, it stretches that spring, and when you let it go, the spring pulls it back to the center position. So in this case, it's probably a little bit off, or the spring might be a little bit worn. So if this lever is back or forward, if it's not in the dead center position, it tricks the machine into thinking that it's in gear. So if you have an issue where you try to hit the key and it doesn't start, here I'll pull this one forward, and nothing happens, see nothing happens, find the center, the sweet spot, and make sure that it's centered, and it'll start, give me a second, it's hot as hell out here. Once again, the brake has to be on. So let's try that little experiment again. Brake is on. If I push this forward, it should not do anything, uh, but it is. If either one of those are out, find the center, hit the key, and it'll be fine. And there you go. So this one, I think, has an intermittent problem with the safety switch because there's a safety switch on each one of the bottoms of these arms, and I think that's one of the original issues with this. But anyway, that's how you put a magneto on. This thing is back in business. This is a wonderful machine. And uh, between you and I, I have less than 200 bucks into this machine. My partner just left and uh, he's trying to talk me into financing it for him or selling it to him because he wants this machine. But it's an $8,000 machine and I have less than 200 bucks into it. Uh, I did tell the previous owner what was wrong with it I don't just rip people off or whatever she decided it was time for her to upgrade to a 50 or a 60 inch machine like this hustlers a 54 um, she wants a 60 or a 54 she cuts 10 acres she knew that I would be able to fix this thing for next to nothing because that's what I do and she just told me, hey, give me this much for it and take it off my hands. I don't want to see it again. So, you know, one of the good things about being in this business is you come across deals. Always be honest with your customers. If she watched this video later, because she knows my channel, and I had not told her what was wrong and, and what needed to be done, and she just saw it on the video, she might freak out and think I tried to rip her off. But I told her ahead of time, this is what's going on. This is all it needed. This is what happened. And she just went, you know what? I'm tired of all the little stuff going wrong with it. You take it. You fix it. You make some videos on it. And, you know, enjoy. So it was very nice of her to do that. Anyway, smash the like button on your way out the door if you're still here. It's somewhere between my chin and my balls. Thanks for stopping by. See you soon.